Please, can we all rise as we welcome the Acting Managing Director, Chief Executive Officer of the Niger Delta Development Commission, Professor Keme Bradikumo Daniel Ponde. You're welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Um, in the recent past, or within the past few days, there has been a flurry of um, bad media propagated against the NDDC and the Interim Management Committee in particular. These have been deliberate, unfounded, spurious um, accusations to railroad um, the Interim Management Committee from working to make the NDDC deliver on its core mandate. There is nothing we have not had. 200, 200 billion naira squandered in two months. It was later revised to 40 billion naira missing in two months, and all type of things. And uh, the recent one, they said 25 billion spent on uh, on done road works. And um, it's very painful that. Uh, the, what we thought was only possible in the social media has also crept into established media because um, two days ago there was um, a discussion on um, Arise TV where they brought in somebody who decided to spew a lot of unfounded allegations, 100% concocted lies against the NDDC. Ordinarily, we wouldn't respond to this type of things because um, it's very, very clear. But um, when lies are repeated over and over, they now appear to be the truth. And uh, it's very painful that the media houses are not even taking time to check properly. The NDDC operates accounts only in the central bank. And it is highly regulated. Anybody who wants to check the accounts of the NDDC is free to do so, to find out how 200 billion Naira can disappear, how 40 billion can disappear, how 25 billion can disappear. Just like in the Bible, where some people said they will not eat or sleep until they kill a certain poor, some people have also decided that until this interim management committee is removed, that they will not know any rest. Whether the people of the Niger Delta benefit or not is not their concern. They are not taking into consideration the fact that there has been not one single project that has been commissioned by the president in this region. But they are interested in every day, IMC this, IMC that. They want to scuttle the forensic audit because the forensic audit is bringing out uh, a lot of things. It's also the issue uh, that was brought about environment of uh, funds. And um, we cannot talk about that without uh, giving you a background about the budget. Today is the 26th of uh, May, 2020. The 2019 budget will expire on the 31st of May without any single project being achieved, mostly because the budget came from the National Assembly very late. It was approved and we got a letter of approval on the 20th of March 2020. And, um, but the real art copy that was signed was only made available to us by the 10th of April. From 10th of April to 31st of May does not give us the leverage to advertise properly for contracts to be executed. So everything was done to scuttle this. And even the hard copy was only released when we started making complaints. Um, um, I don't want to go into what has passed on between the commission and the two committees in the National Assembly. Because those two committees have put the National Assembly in very bad lights. 
whilst we know the majority of the people in the Senate and in the House of Reps had no knowledge of what these two committees were doing to them. All the faults lay in those two committees, which operate as one-man committees, because even members of those committees are not aware of all these efforts that are being done to rape the destiny of the Niger Delta people, to set the Niger Delta people backwards. I state categorically without fear of anybody that the 2019 budget was frustrated for personal reasons of some people in the National Assembly and also the unwarranted probes that they have gone to bring up is to make mockery of the forensic audit. Because I don't know if we all understand what a forensic audit is. We got a letter from one of the committees of the National Assembly asking the forensic auditors to be part of our team to appear before they approve. That is totally unacceptable and cannot be done. The lead forensic auditors are not subject to us and we cannot command them. We are just, we are not part of the forensic auditors. We do not supervise them. We only provide the enabling environment for them to conduct the forensic audit. And we also provide requisite information when they need it. Most of the documents that they're asking us to bring for those uh, phantom probes are things that we have already given to the forensic auditors. That's why they're asking the forensic auditors to join our team. I don't think I have uh, the powers to command the forensic auditors that I did not appoint. The forensic auditors were appointed following um, approval by the Federal Executive Council by Mr. President. Um, magistrates, I think, um, uh, okay, uh, uh, okay, I wanted to speak about the environment aspect. When we now saw that the time frame was very short, and apart from that, the budget that was sent back to us was not recognizable by us. We have been hearing of budget padding. This was a classical case of budget padding. Almost 400 or between almost 500 pro new projects we are added to the budget. And um, the appropriation was done in such a way that uh, meaningful projects were appropriated very little sums of money so that we could not meet any of the commitments. So at one of the meetings between the executive director of projects, Dr. Cairo Ojugbo, and uh, the committees, they now said, okay, for there to be peace, write a letter to us for environment of these funds. Uh, so the letter is supposed to be written through the minister to the president who will pass it to the National Assembly. But meanwhile, they said, okay, because of time, so that we can start working, you can send us an advance copy. Immediately they got this advance copy, they leaked it to the press, even though it was written there for only the National Assembly, secret. It's an official document. They gave copies, but what they did not tell the public was the second document where we were suggesting to them where to appropriate such monies to. For example, we have commitment to the the partnership with the International Federation of uh, Agricultural Development, IFAD, a program like ND. The counterpart funding for 2019 is 1.32 billion. But what was put for all the counterpart programs in agriculture was 150 million. So we asked them, please, because we need to pay this 1.32 billion for this program, can you? remove money from all these programs that are not viable and put there. But what we heard from the social media and the, uh, the debates on Arise TV was that we were asking for environment to uh, cover for fraud. Fraud has not been, I mean like can, something that has not been done be called payment for fraud. They are talking about road contracts. The IMC, let's put it on record, 
has not awarded any road contract, has not awarded any contract at all. What the IMC, the only contract is that on a COVID intervention approved by Mr. President himself. That's the only contract that's been awarded. We have been paying for um, contracts, historical contracts, debts that the agency has, has um, incurred over the time. And we got a letter from the National Assembly now asking us not to pay for these uh, road uh, projects that we had exceeded the threshold. But they had earlier forced us to pay their own contracts that they awarded, which um, we were not supposed to do, but we did just for peace to reign. And now they are coming to blackmail us. I think I will stop there. Thank you. Just come through the statement um, then, but I want to ask a direct question because we've been seeing and hearing a lot of allegations against the NDDC. Council, aware of these criticisms, these media attacks that your uh, IMC, which you heard, is going through? Because um, in your comment, you said the president approved um, the, the most recent uh, project, which has to do with the procurement of medical. Uh, consumables. That's one. Secondly, what is the role of the Minister of Niger, De Niger Delta Affairs in all of this? Thank you. The Council is aware of um, all, these, um, all these accusations and counter accusations. Of course, I am very uh, certain that uh, they should be aware. Um, we have a supervising ministry the Ministry of Niger Delta Affairs. The minister is uh, Senator Goswila Lafabio. And um, from time to time, we give updates. We've written updates of um, all our activities from inauguration as an uh, expanded interim management committee. And um, we've also given a status update complaining about most of these things that you have said. And um, we've sent that to the minister. Whether he has transmitted such to the president or to the Federal Executive Council, I'm yet to know, but we have done so. And uh, the minister is supervising the MDDC on behalf of uh, Mr. President. That's the role of uh, the minister. Thanks. First of all, I want to ask, you, you said we have been paying for debts the NDDC had incurred over time. They had earlier forced us to pay for these contracts which they awarded. Who are the they, sir? And again, I noticed that some National Assembly members are involved, fully, heavily involved in contracts. Why is it so? Because I know that if National Assembly members are involved in you know, executing contracts, there will be problem. Why must it be National Assembly members? Because I know that about four or five years ago, uh, a contract was awarded in somewhere in Southeast. Before you know it, they put one sign, signpost, before and after. That road was never worked upon, up to today. But that signpost is there, though it has been defaced. Why is it so? Why are National Assembly members involved fully in contract uh, execution? The, why the National Assembly members are involved in contract awards, um, I don't know why they are involved, but if they are the ones adding contracts or jobs to the budget, of course, it means that um, it is projects they are interested in and that um, uh, they might uh, get the commission to award to themselves. But we have not awarded contracts, so I can't say how it uh, comes about. But you mentioned something about um, historical con uh, that I mentioned. Yes, government is a continuum. People were giving contracts long ago. They executed these projects 2016, 2017, 
2018, 2019, and they have not been paid. We came in and saw a lot of them, and some of them, the amounts were scandalous. One million naira. How can you be owing somebody one million naira for five, six years? So we started clearing those ones and paying those ones, and till date we have paid almost 400 of those companies. I don't have the exact figure right now, but we have paid almost 400 of those companies. The day you were talking about is something we didn't want to bring to public notice, but um, one thing has led to the other. When we came in, or when I came in uh, to the IMC on the 19th of February, the 2019 and 2020 budgets had already been transmitted to the National Assembly. So the 2019 budget was now laid before both chambers and now approved. Now, there's a process after approval. There has to be harmonization of both budgets. I am Mike Odewu of the Nation newspaper. I would like you to further hit the nail on the head. We want to find out from your in-house investigations, what is really the motive behind this barrage of uh, attacks on the IMC? and uh, the Minister of Niger Data Affairs, Goswil Akbabio. And again, why do you think the National Assembly is insisting on going on with, uh, uh, with probing the IMC? Why? So for that to be done, we were told to pay for certain contracts. If not, the harmonization meeting will not take place. You can quote me. Uh, that was relayed to us uh, through the chairman of the House of Reps Committee on the Niger Delta Development Commission. So we were waiting for the meeting on Monday. Since we didn't pay, the meeting did not take place. On Tuesday, the, me the meeting did not take place. On the 17th of March, we now managed to pay some and pay the others on the 19th of March. And that's when the approval for the budget was transmitted to us by the clerk on the 20th of March. So we were forced to pay almost 20 companies. I can give you the list of the companies. It's here. Um, you can go and cross-check those companies that were paid. But from uh, what we are hearing from staff here, it's been a regular thing all over the years. You have to accede to them or you don't get a budget. It was the lack of budget in 2016, 2017 that led to past management to devise what is now called emergency uh, projects that will not go through budgets. That was the only way they could, execute, they could have projects or run the commission until it now became a very, very big burden. So until we go back to the drawing board, and have the budgeting processes transparent, have the budgeting processes free, and the stranglehold on the NDDC is removed. The stranglehold by the committees with oversight function, until those strangleholds are removed and NDDC is able to get a budget proper, all these problems will continue. Even if you bring anybody from even outer space with excess management capabilities to run the NDDC today, and you do not remove all those things, the problems will remain. Because I could come in here with my own vision of what I want for the NDDC. I want water in every community, but they are giving me a budget that I cannot implement, that has no water in it. So how can the Niger Delta region be changed? People are clamoring for change of the management, IMC, board, and every type of thing. That will just be, um, uh, what would I call it, uh, just changing of people without solving the real problem. The problem is not who is running the place now. It is the processes that are lying underneath that are very rotten, that need to be sorted out. Thank you. Allegation by a group, Niger Data Rights Advocates, that part of the environment request is sent to the National Assembly is to cover for the 40 billion naira your IMC spent in the past three months. Any truth in that? Now, I think um, 
there is something very, very wrong there in the sense that how can the National Assembly nominate people to run the NDDC and give the list to Mr. President? Then Mr. President will now pass the list to the National Assembly to screen for those people to still come and run the NDDC. It does not, I mean, there is separation of powers. Mr. President has a right to nominate whoever he feels should run a place. He has the powers to hire and fire. He should leave Mr. President to exercise that power. It is they are trying to double into the powers of Mr. President that is bringing a lot of all this blackmail. Now, because the minister of the Niger Delta Affairs is supervising this, it is believed that uh, he is the one that, has the, uh, that is uh, nominating everybody that Mr. President is um, nominating. So they need to fight him to remove him from uh, uh, the ministry. That's why you are seeing all this barrage. But they are not looking at the track record of uh, the minister. He transformed Akwaibom states. He has a passion now to transform the Niger Delta region. But they say, no, we don't want the Niger Delta region transformed. We want the NDDC to be a place to remain the way it has always been, a place that generates money for elections. And this cannot continue. We cannot continue to use the Niger Delta Development Commission as a place to generate war chests for election. The real problem we are seeing now is because of the governorship election in Delta State 2023. Who controls this place and who raises the money? That's just the basic truth. Thank you. False. The, what the IMC has spent from the 20th of February till date is very, very available and cannot be something that will be covered. Contractors have been paid. We have told you the number of contractors that have been paid. Are those stolen monies? monies that they pay to contractors that I do not know. We can give you a list of all the contractors at the end of this press briefing, and we'll ask you to go and contact those contractors to find out if they were paid or not. We'll have put the amounts of money there, but we don't want anybody kidnapped. But that's the basic truth. We'll give you a list of all the contractors, a long list of contractors that have been paid. Please go and confirm. We are not covering anything. And uh, how they arrive at their figures, I don't understand. As I've said earlier on, the NDDC operates accounts only in the central bank. NDDC does not give a check. I don't know if anybody has seen a check written by NDDC to anybody. NDDC pays money into your accounts. They are traceable. Please, there's Freedom of Information Act. Let everybody use that uh, maximally. Thank you. Um, First of all, uh, because it's getting personal, so let me talk for myself. But ideally, I should be talking about the IMC. I'm not a politician. And um, the governors, what I've just said is exactly what the governors had said earlier, that um, the problem is to raise a war chest for elections. And how do you do that? You put people that are very pliable, people that are amenable to your demands. When you put those people in charge of the NDDC, then you ask them, go and bring this, and you bring that for the elections. And as far as that continues, NDDC will not make any progress. That's why we're trying to have a paradigm shift. Now, you are talking about if I'll be able to withstand um, uh, those type of demands. I will be able to withstand those type of demands with the help of everybody here, when we start doing everything transparently. That's why we are very happy you are asking us questions, but it's not only what we call press conferences. Come to the commission and also we need constructive criticisms. Come and check. Ask us for what we are doing so that we can open the books. And if the committees of the National Assembly were doing their oversight functions, most of, there wouldn't have been the need for even a forensic audit in the first place. If you go to premium times, there's a report they have done about um, water projects in Delta South, a senatorial district. Non-existent water projects between 2004 and 2012. 
Nobody is proving those things. But they have all been paid for. Please, go to Premium Times and check. There is one other report they did earlier on on uh, um, L centers built in, is it Imo or Abia, Abia State? Some of them have been converted to private schools. Totally, a lot has gone wrong in MDDC. And that is what is supposed to be corrected. So the forensic audit, by the time the re reports come out properly, if the forensic audit is allowed to continue to its very end, it's going to unearth all this rape of our people. And all those ideally should be brought to book. And I can assure you that just the beginning of the forensic audit alone has sent some contractors back to site. There are contractors who are supposed to do supplies. Since 2014, they want to do the supplies now. It's just the lockdown, the COVID. The contractor is ready to come and do supplies, agricultural supplies that were supposed to have been done since 2014. But there are many other people who have eaten this money who are not ready to make refunds, who are going to do everything to truncate these forensic audits. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for that question. You must be a prophet because uh, we had a meeting of the directors yesterday morning and we discussed, um, if you remember, we discussed uh, SOPs. That there should be SOPs for every, every directorate, every, every procedure, every activity. And um, we, we are looking at this um, IT components. And uh, unfortunately, um, there's been a, a litigation with uh, the service providers. I think it's a uh, Vodacom. And um, we're trying to resolve that because that is the way to go. To reduce the interface between the contractors and the staff. Because this continuous um, interface between the contractors and the staff has led to a lot of... Uh, corruption and the percentages and all the things that are giving the commission a very, very bad name. Um, as you rightly said, I don't know the reason why that was stopped, but I want to assure you that it is one of the things we have on our uh, drawing books that we're trying to do, if not for all these unnecessary distractions that we're having. Because like by the time we go and spend one or two weeks in Abuja defending things that uh, we have not done, we could have used that time sorting out uh, uh, proper uh, problems. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. I don't have those, uh, those figures there. But basically what was done was that like uh, what was appropriated by the National Assembly, new figures were suggested to them and uh, that like this project might not be feasible within this time frame. Can you move this to this? And remember, like uh, some of the things you are mentioning are like recurrent um, expenditure, which um, I, I would like call it um, the budgetary year is supposed to be January to December. Now we're talking about 2019 budget in the middle of 2020, and it's going to expire 31st of May. Now the processes for the 2020 budget will now start, and that 2020 budget is going to expire when? 31st of December. So it's a very, very difficult thing to balance. So most times you will say, okay, let us appropriate this amount so that we'll be able to take care of projects. Some of these uh, programs and projects uh, take months. It's not just one month. But if it's like um, a contract, you can give the contract and award the contract. But when it is a, a, a program, you spend almost every month for that program. Then when you're talking about, uh, uh, you're talking about medical for staff. Of course, you have to pay. If, if, if somebody is not healthy, the person cannot work. So, so I'm very, very surprised that um, 
they gave that to that Mr. Kola Wale, and he was reading. Uh, and if he was lying, nobody knew because nobody was seeing the figures. So thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Um, if, if they are altruistic in their approach to everything, there should be no problem. It is for the people of the region. But when they start personalizing things, what this problem is bringing to the fore is the fact that the committees with oversight function have only existed in name as per committee, but they are just functions performed by one person, the chairman of the Senate committee and the chairman of the, I mean the two people, chairman of the Senate committee and chairman of the House of Reps uh, committee. And until they are told to do the proper thing. Let the committee look at the budget, the entire committee, and appropriate. And we are told that there is a percentage to which they cannot adjust the budget. There's a percentage. I think it's 5%. But what we are seeing is like 2,000% adjustment or whatever. I'm not a statistician. <laughs> when you are adding projects that are not there and appropriating monies to and fro. If that is not corrected, they, it is as if we are castigating the entire National Assembly. No, it is those committees and those committee chairmen that are trying to bring the entire National Assembly to this uh, level of disrepute. So whether they give us 2020 budget is another story altogether. But if we all work together, we can make them give us the 2020 budget. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Ma. It is uh, under investigation, and um, I don't think um, I can go into details. But what you said earlier uh, is true. The, we have staff working against uh, the system, especially the staff who are asked to go on a mandatory leave. And um, instead, what we are getting from the National Assembly is that staff had been sacked. And uh, we should come and explain why the staff were sacked. And um, NDDC was magnanimous. Uh, FIRS retired night directors, streets, and the heavens have not come down. Yeah, we asked them, go on mandatory leave pending the outcome of the forensic audit. Be at home and be chopping your salary and allowances. And it has become a problem. They are part of the problem we are facing. But, um, we believe that uh, we'll do reorganization of the staff, we'll do reorientation of the staff, work ethics will change. The place needs total overall, and it is changing. It is changing, just all these distractions. But as far as that case you mentioned, um, it's under investigation, and uh, I cannot speak about it. Thanks. Please, can we all rise as we welcome the Acting Managing Director, Chief Executive Officer of the Niger Delta Development Commission, Professor Keme Bradikumo Daniel Pondi. You're welcome, sir. Um, in the recent past, or uh, within the past few days, there has been a flurry of um, bad media propagated against the NDDC and the Interim Management Committee in particular. These have been deliberate, unfounded, spurious um, accusations to railroad um, the Interim Management Committee from working to make the NDDC deliver on its core mandate. 
there is nothing we have not had. 200, and 200 billion naira squandered in two months. It was later revised to 40 billion naira missing in two months. And all type of things. And uh, the recent one, they said 25 billion spent on, uh, on done road works. And um, it's very painful that uh, the, what we thought was only possible in the social media has also crept into established media. Because um, two days ago, there was um, a discussion on um, Arise TV where they brought in somebody who decided to spew a lot of unfounded allegations. 100% concocted lies against the NDDC. Ordinarily, we wouldn't respond to this type of things because um, it's very, very clear. But um, when lies are repeated over and over, they now appear to be the truth. And uh, it's very painful that the media houses are not even taking time to check properly. The NDDC operates accounts only in the central bank. And it is highly regulated. Anybody who wants to check the accounts of the NDDC is free to do so, to find out how 200 billion Naira can disappear, how 40 billion can disappear, how 25 billion can disappear. Just like in the Bible, where some people said, they will not eat or sleep until they kill a certain poor. Some people have also decided that until this interim management committee is removed, that they will not know any rest. Whether the people of the Niger Delta benefit or not is not their concern. They are not taking into consideration the fact that there has been not one single project that has been commissioned by the president in this region but they are interested in every day, IMC this, IMC that. They want to scuttle the forensic audit because the forensic audit is bringing out uh, a lot of things. It's also the issue uh, that was brought about environment of uh, funds. And um, we cannot talk about that without uh, giving you a background about the budget. Today is the 26th of uh, May, 2020. The 2019 budget will expire on the 31st of May without any single project being achieved, mostly because the budget came from the National Assembly very late. It was approved and we got a letter of approval on the 20th of March 2020. And, um, but the real hard copy that was signed was only made available to us by the 10th of April. From 10th of April to 31st of May does not give us the leverage to advertise properly for contracts to be executed. So everything was done to scuttle this. And even the hard copy was only released when we started making complaints. Um, um, I don't want to go into what has passed on between the commission and the two committees in the National Assembly. Because those two committees have put the National Assembly in very bad light. Whilst we know the majority of the people in the Senate and in the House of Reps had no knowledge of what these two committees were doing to them. All the faults lay in those two committees, which operate as one-man committees. Because even members of those committees are not aware of all these efforts that are being done to rape the destiny of the Niger Delta people, to set the Niger Delta people backwards. I state categorically without fear of anybody that the 2019 budget was frustrated for personal reasons of some people in the National Assembly and also the unwarranted probes that they have gone to bring up is to make mockery 
of the forensic audit because I don't know if we all understand what a forensic audit is. We got a letter from one of the committees of the National Assembly asking the forensic auditors to be part of our team to appear before they approve. That is totally unacceptable and cannot be done. The lead forensic auditors are not subject to us and we cannot command them. We are just, we are not part of the forensic auditors. We do not supervise them. We only provide the enabling environment for them to conduct the forensic audit. And we also provide requisite information when they need it. Most of the documents that they're asking us to bring for those uh, phantom probes are things that we have already given to the forensic auditors. That's why they're asking the forensic auditors to join our team. I don't think I have uh, the powers to command the forensic auditors that I did not appoint. The forensic auditors were appointed following um, approval by the Federal Executive Council by Mr. President. Um, magistrates, I think, um, uh, okay, uh, uh, okay, I wanted to speak about the environment aspect. When we now saw that the time frame was very short, and apart from that, the budget that was sent back to us was not recognizable by us. We have been hearing of budget padding. This was a classical case of budget padding. Almost 400 or between almost 500 pro new projects we are added to the budget. And um, the appropriation was done in such a way that uh, meaningful projects were appropriated very little sums of money so that we could not meet any of the commitments. So at one of the meetings between the executive director of projects, Dr. Cairo Ojugbo, and uh, the committees, they now said, okay, for there to be peace, write a letter to us for environment of these funds. Uh, so the letter is supposed to be written through the minister to the president who will pass it to the National Assembly. But meanwhile, they said, okay, because of time, so that we can start working, you can send us an advance copy. Immediately they got this advance copy, they leaked it to the press, even though it was written there for only the National Assembly, secret. It's an official document. They gave copies, but what they did not tell the public was the second document where we were suggesting to them where to appropriate such monies to. For example, we have commitment to the, the partnership with the International Federation of uh, Agricultural Development, IFAD, a program like ND. The counterpart funding for 2019 is 1.32 billion. But what was put for all the counterpart programs in agriculture was 150 million. So we asked them, please, because we need to pay this 1.32 billion for this program, can you remove money from all these programs that are not viable and put there? But what we heard from the social media and the, uh, the debates on Arise TV was that we were asking for environment to uh, cover for fraud. Fraud does not been, I mean like can, something that's not been done be called payment for fraud. They are talking about road contracts. The IMC, let's put it on record, has not awarded any road contract, has not awarded any contract at all. What the IMC, the only contract is that on a COVID intervention approved by Mr. President himself. That's the only contract that's been awarded. We have been paying for um, contracts, historical contracts, debts that the agency has, has um, incurred over the time. And we got a letter from the National Assembly now asking us not to pay for these uh, road uh, projects that we had exceeded the threshold. But they had earlier forced us to pay their own contracts that they awarded, which um, we were not supposed to do, but we did. 
just for peace to reign. And now they are coming to blackmail us. I think I will stop there. Thank you.